Issues around growth and development are um, parents can be worried whether a child is growing very well. They can be worried if the child is short compared to their peers or, or compared to their family. Um, and sometimes they can be concerned that the child might be growing, uh, you know, too fast or too tall compared to their peers or, or their family. And these are the main reasons that a child, uh, that parents would consider uh, seeing a doctor regarding growth. Uh, the growth itself, you have to look at a few aspects of growth. Um, is the child growing at a normal pace, at a normal speed, um, but is growing on their own path, on their own centile, on a growth chart? If that is the case, it is less worrying. The second question is, is the child actually slowing down in the growth? The, the speed of growth, is it slowing down? Um, is the child crossing centiles on a growth chart? Um, there are a few aspects that you have to look at. Um, is a child small or short compared to the family? Um, is a child actually small but is relevant for the family's height? So if, if parents are tall, it's likely that the child is going to be taller. If the child, if the parents are smaller or shorter, it's like the child is going to be shorter. So it's not just one aspect of growth. It's about the speed of growth, the trend of growth. Is the child um, small compared to the parents? Is there a slowing down of growth? These are the things that, that one needs to look at. And um, the other thing is obviously if the child is very small compared to family and target um, or well below the lower centiles in a growth chart, that's something that we need to then consider. And um, lots of things um, have to be considered in, in regards to growth. And um, first of all, it may well be that the child is small because that's the genetic pattern for the child, that the parents are far small and the child is going to be small. But it can be sometimes a delay, what is called constitutional delay in growth and puberty. So especially if one parent or both has had a late growth spurt, if they were late in puberty, if it's the mother late in menarche or having their first period, it is possible that the child might be late in in, in, in going through puberty and, and development. So that's called constitutional delay of growth and puberty. Yeah? And that is a normal phenomenon. Um, and these children will eventually get back to normal height and would be appropriate for their family target height. Saying that, there are a few conditions that we will need to look at um, as a screening um, if a child is small. So what are the things that, that we can look at? So we should look at common factors or more common factors that can impinge on growth. Um, nutrition is important, especially in the first year of life. Um, nutrition is what drives growth. So nutrition is very important in infants, but right throughout life, um, adequate nutrition is important. So that's, that's one thing. There are some uh, diseases or illnesses that can also make you not grow. So we can think of things like thyroid disease. So if your thyroid levels are too low, if you're hypothyroid, it might impinge on your growth. Um, things like problems with uh, absorption. So celiac disease, that is an intolerance to gluten in wheat. Um, if this is a problem, then again, it can be very subtle. Sometimes it can be associated with tummy pain or constipation, loose stools, but not always. Um, it can just be isolated growth failure in children with celiac disease. Um, rarely problems with your kidney function. Um, if you've got um, impaired renal function or what is called chronic renal failure, that can affect your growth. Um, uh, growth hormone deficiency. So that's another important thing to think of. So in, in mid-childhood, it's, it's growth hormone that, that really is important to, to drive your growth, to make you grow at the correct speed or have the correct growth velocity. And um, now we can't really do very formal growth hormone testing on a one-off one blood test, but we can do what is called IGF-1 or insulin-like growth factor one which gives you an idea whether the growth hormone is adequate. 
Now, if you are seriously concerned about growth hormone deficiency, then there are further tests that will need to be done, um, which involves what are called growth hormone provocation tests. But this is not the initial screening test that needs to be done. Um, so there's quite a few tests that needs to be done as an initial screening test if we are seriously concerned about growth. And when I say seriously concerned, it's usually if a child is small compared to their parents, if a child's speed of growth is, is slowing down, um, or if a child is extremely small compared to their parents and, and peers. So, so these are the things that, that one needs to look at in growth. Later on, um, puberty is an important factor. So if you're not going into puberty, again, this can be due to constitutional delay as we discussed before. But if there's a genuine problem with, with puberty, um, if the puberty is not happening for whatever reason, then that's something we can uh, explore, investigate and help if necessary. Now, there's one other aspect of, of growth that we need to look at in children who are small. And, and this is the, the, the rare occurrence of, uh, of chromosomal problems. So that is the way your genes are. And um, for example, girls who, especially girls who are small, um, they need to have, uh, you need to consider doing chromosome analysis for things like Turner syndrome. So this is where the chromosomes are not as it should be, and that can impinge on growth. So in girls and boys, but especially girls who are small, there are chromosomal tests, especially Turner's tests that needs to be done. So there is a lot of things that needs to be done. The, the key is investigating if necessary or reassuring early rather than wait till puberty has happened and puberty has finished, because if puberty has finished, then there is no intervention that can, that can be done to, to make you grow anymore because once puberty is done, the, the, the growth plates in your long bones fuse, which means that there is no growth possible. So in girls, once the periods have started and in boys, once they start shaving, really at that point, not much can be done to enhance their growth. So the growth disorders that we talked about are really, uh, I think the, the, the vast majority are patients who are concerned about small stature. I did touch about most of the growth disorders um, in my uh, previous uh, discussion with you. So as mentioned, um, growth hormone deficiency is not very common, but it's something that needs to be recognized early. Um, other illnesses that can impinge on your growth um, include, as we discussed, uh, celiac disease, chronic renal failure, thyroid disorders, um, and chromosomal problems like Turner syndrome or other chromosomal. Now, we have been concentrating on small, small stature or children who are small, but conversely, there can be children who are tall, and that may well be just, again, you know, due to constitutional, uh, where the parents are tall, um, but there can be a few other conditions uh, that needs to be excluded, like growth hormone excess. Now, as extremely rare, um, we do need to check for thyroid as well in, in very tall children. And if it's associated with any other problems like uh, issues with learning, neurodevelopmental delay, and then we got to look at, again at, at chromosomal or genetic causes that may cause this. It may well be that the growth problems are, if you think about growth in three stages. So in infancy, growth is driven mainly by nutrition. So if a child under the age of one, an infant is defined as someone under the age of one, um, is not growing, it is more likely this is nutritional. Nutrition, you know, it, it drives growth right throughout life uh, or your growing years, but especially so in the first year. So we got to look at growth and nutrition in the first year. Um, in middle childhood, that is when they are from one year till puberty, uh, growth hormone deficiency is something that one needs to look at carefully amongst all the other illnesses that we have talked about. Now, in the first year of life, that's when the growth is the fastest. So children from zero to one year 
can grow at about 25 centimeters per year. So that uh, it's a significant growth. Mid childhood, it's more modest growth, can range from four centimeters per year to about six centimeters per year. Then pubertal growth. So that is again, a very fast growth spur driven by puberty. In girls, they grow fastest in early puberty. Boys grow fastest in mid puberty. So that growth spurt at peak in girls can be about eight centimeters per year. And in boys, it can be 10 centimeters per year. So again, you know, you've got to look at individually, is it a nutritional issue? Is it, a, is it an illness that we talked about that we can investigate for? Or is it just the fact these children are either genetically small because the parents are small or genetically tall because the parents are tall? Or is puberty delayed for any particular reason? Or is puberty early? If puberty is early, you might grow faster but finish earlier. If puberty is very early, then that's something again that needs to be looked at. Now, by definition, for girls, that's defined as eight now, eight years of age, and boys nine. So starting puberty um, before the age of eight and in boys before the age of nine is thought to be not quite right and may need investigations. So these are the, all, all the factors that one needs to look at in, in, uh, in dealing with growth. Either small stature, which is by far the most um, concerns that people have, or rarely tall stature.